Yep, that's me. Now you're probably wondering how I got here. Well, it all starts with one level. Midem2 Cole had one online rated level when he revolutionized difficulty in quite the opposite way that Darnock and Jax did. Instead of creating the easiest difficulty, he would create the hardest difficulty. He released his new level Demon Park, which was harder than any other level at the time and used spikes inside of blocks to guide you. Robtop immediately took inspiration from this level's name and named the new difficulty Demon. Beating a demon level would give you 10 stars and some bragging rights. Unlike the auto difficulty, which would end up being officially implemented in the 1.7 update, the demon difficulty would be implemented in the very next update, update 1.3. Speaking of that update, it would take a month after 1.2 for this update to release. Well, after Demon Park, other demon levels would spring up and many players would try to make the hardest level in Geometry Dash. It all started with the officialization of the demon difficulty when 1.3 came out. With the officialization of the demon difficulty, six 1.2 levels that were considered too difficult to be insane rated would be updated to become demons. Of these was the previously mentioned original demon level Demon Park. The second was To the Grave, a level by Darnock which was considered to be harder than Demon Park. The third was The Nightmare by Jax, a level that started to be called the easiest demon, but it still managed to be difficult enough to be crowned the demon rating. The fourth was The Lightning Road by Timeless, which was known for being the first ever level to have a flashing background, a unique concept for the time. Then came the fifth level, Extreme Park by Rabbit, a level known for taking memory and Geometry Dash levels to the extreme. It started to be considered to be the hardest demon. The final 1.2 demon level was Super Cycles, another demon by Jax. The hardest demons would have negative stigma surrounding them with To the Grave and Extreme Park picking up negative dislike ratios. On the other hand, the easiest demons were received well. The Nightmare is the most downloaded and liked demon as of today, with the Lightning Road coming in at second place. These six demons established the foundation for what was about to happen in update 1.3. One month after the 1.2 update released, 1.3 would roll around. It came with one new official level, X-Step. With the release of X-Step, many new features would be revealed. Look at these cool new gravity changers. Right before the beat drop of this level, a lot of blue pads were lined up and helped build up to the drop. Many people would start using this in their levels. Along with that, new pulsing objects which expanded and reduced in size depending on the song playing in the background were added. It also added another way to design your block structures. All of this combined with new platforms, new hazards, new icons, new effects, and the officialization of the demon difficulty would make this the biggest update that the game had seen thus far. One last addition to update 1.3 I should mention is the officialization of the star system and creator points. While rates and features existed before, now creators were rewarded for how much rates and features they could get while anyone who beat these levels would be rewarded with a star boost in their star count, a number based on how hard the level is. Immediately, Darnock would apparently at a point be number one in both of the leaderboards, however, the first screenshots of the leaderboard show a Korean player and creator known as Mask463 being the number one player in terms of stars, being the first person to reach 80 stars while Darnock was the number one in the creator leaderboard. The circle of life in Geometry Dash started with creators releasing new levels that would be rewarded with raids and features while players who beat them would be rewarded with an increased star count. Demons would immediately start being produced in update 1.3, with the first of them being Y-Step, Darnock's remake of Robtop's level X-Step. Around this time, a player known as Neptune had created his first level, Stereo Madness V2. The V stands for version. Stereo Madness version 2 looked and played the same as Stereo Madness, but the level was purposely designed to be a little more difficult. Neptune would start doing this with the rest of the Robtop levels. Back on Track V2, Polar Gas V2, Dry Out V2, you get the picture. The series was well received and Neptune would become one of the most popular creators of his time. Neptune wouldn't be the only creator to rise up. Another creator had been honing his creator skill in the editor. At first, this creator went by many names, but it's been Majako for several years, so we'll be calling him that. Majako did not start like any other creator. Rather than building levels, he would build structures. Eventually, he would take what he learned from building these structures and make a real Geometry Dash level with it. He would call it Silent Hill. Now if you look at Silent Hill, it's clearly unique compared to other levels of its time, with its spam of portal structures and weird design choices, it's somewhat confusing to play through, and it would be Majako's first impact on the creating community. Meanwhile, in the leaderboards... While the creator leaderboard would stay homogenous with Mask taking over Darnock for a brief period of time, Darnock would swiftly take his position back. 
the star leaderboard would be quite a different story because it would have a lot more competition revolving the first place position. So, who will win? Quickly after Mask hit 80 stars, he would be dethroned by a player that at first just went by the username Player, but then changed their username to DBTKDDN9402. DBT would be the first player to reach 100 stars, and he was number one for a short time, until suddenly being dethroned by a player called Seungjun, which apparently by being able to get 180 stars in a single day was able to widen the gap by over 100 stars between him and DBT. This may sound suspicious, but let's be real. Who would hack a simple $2 mobile game like Geometry Dash? That being said, briefly after being the first player to reach 300 stars in Geometry Dash, Young Jun would be thwarted by another player whose star count suddenly exploded. WJS took over the leaderboards for one day, and briefly after being the first player to reach 400 stars, he would eventually be beaten by DBT, which through consistent star growth would finally be crowned the number one player once again. During DBT's most dominant performance, he would be the first player to slay 10 demon levels and he would be the first player to reach 1000 stars. Eventually, on the 19th of December, a player and creator known as PZMC would finally take over DBT and DBT would never recover. DBT would quickly fall to third as he was taken over by a Korean player known as PG1004. While the communities of players and creators were already two different sides of the Geometry Dash community, PZMC and PG also represent two sides of the player community. You see, players like PG1004 are commonly referred to as Demon Slayers. These players mainly played Geometry Dash to beat the hardest contemporary levels of the time, while players like PZMC were referred to as Star Grinders, which would try to beat as many levels as possible to increase their star count, not really caring about what the difficulty of the level was. Demon Slayers would be burdened with a lower star count, as you could beat two somewhat easy levels and still get a higher star count than having to burn hundreds or even thousands of attempts on a lackluster 10 star reward from beating a demon level. PG1004 had beaten every single demon level at the time, but he was still over 100 stars behind PZMC, which on December 22 had claimed to have beaten every single level in the game. All except for a single demon level called Demon World. However, unfortunately for Pease MC, Demon World wouldn't fold as easily as he thought it would, and Pease would keep attempting to beat it until he woke up on December 25th with an unfortunate fate. Pease MC's account data was completely corrupted, and all traces of any activity he had on Geometry Dash except for one level he made called Hell and Heaven would be wiped forever. After the data corruption, PG1004 would assume the role of the number one player, and going into the 1.4 update which would release tomorrow, PG1004 would be the best player. On December 26th, update 1.4 would come out. This update would roll out a new level called Clutterfunk, which was a big change in style from any level ever seen before. With a weird music track would come a weird level. The 1.4 update would add two new block decoration templates, and with that would come many other pieces of decoration. A new object was also released that would come to define the new level in its update. The saw blocks came with their own decoration, and players would start using these frequently. Along with this, we received a new set of portals, the Mini Portal and Normal Portal. The Mini Portal would turn your cube ship or ball into a small version of itself while the Normal Portal would put you back to size. If you beat Clutterfunk, you would unlock a new ship. Before update 1.4, only your icon was customizable, but now there was 5 different ships to choose from. So, how is PG doing at the top? Well, only a few days after 1.4 came out, another player would skyrocket to the top. This player was known as Denim, and he would quickly pass a DBT and PG in star count. Denim became the new top player sitting at a throne comprised of over 2,000 stars, but little did he know that his accomplishment would be short-lived. To talk about what would eventually happen, we have to talk about a mysterious Korean creator that goes by the name of Son0924. Son would start his creating career with a level called Hugh Polar Guys, which got its name from combining Son's other username, Hugh Dark, with the song that the level used, Polar Geist. This level, along with other levels Son would release after, would be quite unremarkable, as apart from the climax, none of them would pick up rates, and they would all be extremely obscure levels. Around the end of 1.3, the hardest level in the game was still considered by many to be the fifth demon, called Extreme Park. This would change when a Korean creator known as RA7 would release a level called BP9. 
Robtop had obliviously raided the level, not knowing that there was secrets behind the surface of the level. You see, BP Knight would be the first ever level that would attempt to have a secret way, a hidden route early in the level that you could use to skip the rest of the level's gameplay. After Robtop found out about this, he would immediately unrate the level. Another Korean creator known as Roadboss would release a level to compete with the likes of Extreme Park, however this time you might say he went a little overboard. This level was called Heaven and Hell, and it took clear inspiration from PZMC's own level, Hell and Heaven. It was briefly raided until people started realizing that there was a secret way and that the main route of the level had most of its gameplay based on something known as Orb Spam. This was considered to be impossible. Would anyone be able to dethrone Extreme Park legitimately? Well, after getting one of his levels known as the Climax raided, Sono924 would go on to release the most infamous level of his career. This is a level called the Hell Zone. As the story goes, Sone would release this level and it would be extremely controversial. After Robtop seemingly not noticing it, Sone would go on Touch Arcade to contact Robtop. Many creators of the time would use Touch Arcade to ask Robtop questions or ask Robtop to rate their level. Son would ask Robtop the latter question, however Robtop declined to rate the Hell Zone. Robtop would refuse to rate it, asking Sone to nerf certain parts of the level before he would reconsider his decision. In Geometry Dash difficulty, there is three terms that are thrown around when updating the gameplay. Buffing, which is the practice of making a level harder, nerfing, which is the practice of making a level easier, and balancing, which uses both of these tactics to make a more refined level. Sohn would nerf the infamous first jump of the level while the rest of the level remained mostly the same. If I told you this severely impacted the difficulty of the level, I would be a liar. There were still many extremely tight timings included in the level. Most notoriously, this orb part, this four pad jump the constant force spikes around the map, and other difficult timings involved late in the level which split into two different paths. Luckily for Sone though, Robtop would rate the Hell Zone. This entire ordeal was able to attract the attention of the Geometry Dash World Cafe Forum. This forum was comprised entirely of Korean players and they would start being suspicious of Sone's achievement. Everyone knew that Robos and RA7 put a secret way in their level, but interestingly enough, nobody could find a secret way in the Hell Zone. Sone decided to clear his name by posting a screenshot of the completion of the Hell Zone, and while most players of the forum would still hold their suspicion, Sone's achievement would seem all the more possible as soon enough he wouldn't be the only player to claim victory of the Hell Zone. You see, there was another player on the rise and his name was Seri. Seri was known for beating anything he put his mind to, and he would commonly post comments on hard levels few could beat, claiming that he beat them. The Hell Zone would be one of the levels that Seri left a comment on claiming to be the first victor. Anyways, back to Denim. While he would try to resist the uprising of Seri, Seri's meteoric rise to the top wouldn't let out, and Seri would quickly dethrone Denim and take the top spot for himself. Seri seemed to be the perfect player in every way. No level or player could match his expertise. However, Sone would soon post a second entry to the Hell series called the Hell World. Even though the Hell World was harder than the Hell Zone, Seri would make quick work of this level and people on the Geometry Dash World forum started asking Seri for proof videos. But Seri said the videos would be too long since levels of this caliber required too much time to be invested in them. Sone would ask Robtop to rate this level and Robtop would comply, giving it a star rating. While these levels would pick up negative dislike ratios, Sone would continue releasing levels for his Hell series. Next was the Hell Dignity, which was a level so difficult that even Seri couldn't beat it. Regardless of this defeat, Seri still had unmatched skill and kept dominating the star leaderboard, while Darnok, with his somewhat fast production of well-made levels, would keep increasing the space between him and the second place creator, Mask. And while a few other creators would be able to get over 10 creator points, going into update 1.5, Darnok was unmatched in CP count, being the only player with over 30 creator points points. Update 1.5 would release on January 30th of 2014 and it would as usual bring one new level. This level used a song called Theory of Everything by music artist DJ Nate. It contained a new block format and ways to color the outlines of your blocks with many other added on decorations. These spinny things to put around your orbs, which also include a brand new purple one. It's like if the yellow orb only used 50% of its power. Also, these dead bushes. And these cute little spikes. And actual clouds. And some extra pulsers, including either a very nice level tip or a complete middle finger to the player. Don't click anything that has this pulsar on it and the precursor to any aids memory part in a Geometry Dash level. 
However, this pales in comparison to the biggest new addition of this update. Finally, there would be a new game mode since 1.2 came out with the Gravity Ball. Remember when I told you that Darnok's first level Gravity Field would plant an idea in Rob Top's head? Well, that idea would be fully realized in the new game mode that came to be known as the UFO. Every time you tap on the screen, whether you're in the air or on the ground, the UFO will jump. Darnock had helped Robtop invent the UFO, and now with the new tools of the update, Darnock would specifically capitalize on the UFO game mode. When I mentioned the controls of the UFO, you might think it controlled similarly to one of mobile gaming's most iconic protagonists, Flappy Bird. Darnock would make an entire level based off this concept. Even though it was just a UFO going through the same copy-pasted pipes and spikes, this would be the mark of the first ever major trend in the community. Flappy Bird levels. Other than that trend, creators like Mask and Funny Game would continue using the new features and level editing tricks to create some of the best levels seen during the 1.5 update. Along with that, notable new creators like Zenthic Alpha, Mr. Cheese Tiger, and Experienced Dawn would begin making their name during this update as well. Shortly after 1.5 came around, Sone would release the fourth level in the Hell series called the Hell Origin. Sone realized that neither the Hell Dignity nor the Hell Origin had received rates, so he went to Touch Arcade to contact Robtop, and this time Darnock would assist in Robtop's response. Robtop told Sone that the levels were too difficult and not fun for the player. Perhaps the line was clearly crossed when not even Seri could beat these levels. Luckily for Sone though, Robtop would still rate these levels. Meanwhile, in the leaderboards... Sari and Denim had a fierce battle for the number one spot, but a third party started to get involved in the race. This third party was Majako, creator of Silent Hill. After a dormant period in 1.4 where he created one obscure short level that got deleted, he would return back to 1.5 not only with a bang, but with an extremely difficult level. This is Stereo Demon S, a level that at its peak may have thwarted every single rated level in difficulty. It wasn't nearly as messy as Silent Hill, and it was far more based around structures like these spike pyramids, these gauntlets, this monster face, this dude Loki holding a sword, and then the Fire Emblem cast. Needless to say, this level was difficult and would immediately fall under a negative dislike ratio because of this. Majako had found himself at the top of the leaderboard, but this wouldn't be for long because Majako's account data, just like many other number one players, would be deleted. But Denim was still in the race, right? Well, guess what happened to his account data? Deleted. Now the star grinder sitting at second place, Super SNSD, was over 1,200 stars away from Seri. This started Seri's long period of dominance over the main leaderboard of Geometry Dash. While Denim would go back to star grinding, Majako would go back to his level editor where he would create his next masterpiece. This is another uniquely crafted level by Majako that goes by the name of Back on Mountain. It's a clear sequel to Stereo Demon S. If you notice the Geometry Dash levels that we've talked about so far, they haven't exactly tried to create a real world landscape in Geometry Dash levels. Back on Mountain was the first to do this. It created a mountain theme and the idea of this level would come to influence many themed levels in the future. When it came to Back on Mountain, other aspects like Stereo Demon S would be brought over like the difficulty. Robtop would ask Majako to make the level slightly easier before he would rate it, and when Majako complied, Back on Mountain became rated. Someone was slightly salty about the nerfs. That someone was none other than the Great Seri, who was a little irritated that the level was too easy after the nerfs. Stereo Demoness would maintain its placing as the hardest rated level to ever be released going into the 1.6 update. While every Geometry Dash update up to this point would be monthly, 1.6 would take around two months to come out. This wouldn't be the only unusual factor of update 1.6, as Robtop would release two official levels. The first of the duo was Electroman Adventures, which would showcase most of the new features of the update. There was a lot of new additions to the block palette, including these small mini blocks and slabs in these new designs. There was more of everything. Different saws, different spikes, and definitely different decoration. And look at these blocks. They break. Apart from this though, it seemed that there wasn't much changes to the gameplay. At least that would be the case if the second level that Robtop made to introduce the rest of these changes didn't exist. You see, ever since demons were introduced in 1.3, there was now dozens of them, and people were wondering when Robtop would make a demon level of his own. His answer was Clubstep. Clubstep would start with this cute fella. This monster, along with all the other demonic imagery in the level, would be a second massive influence to the creating community. However, to be a demon level, this level would have to have some tricks up its sleeve. Including fake spikes, invisible spikes, block mazes, tricky ship and UFO timings, and memory parts. 
Club Step would become one of the most famous Geometry Dash levels of all time, and one of the first recorded victors of Club Step, Alex Payne 24, would eventually reap the rewards of his video gaining popularity in the Geometry Dash community. It is at this point where I should mention the YouTube scene in Geometry Dash. During this time, it really wasn't that big, and there was only 4 people who posted their videos onto YouTube. The first is obviously Robtop with his trailers and previews. The second was the previously mentioned YouTuber Alex Payne, a hardcore gamer who would start recording videos of the Geometry Dash main levels only 13 days after the release of the game. He would even record videos of online demons like The Nightmare, Hextech Flow, and Crescendo. The third content creator was Darnock, which after helping implement every play in Geometry Dash would go on to post previews of his own levels and completions of official levels. The fourth and final content creator was Daddy Pro, which posted replays of many different types of levels. Official levels, online levels, and a replay of his own first level which no longer exists in the Geometry Dash servers. So moving back to the Geometry Dash app, going to your menu will let you see the extra player customization options which included new custom gravity balls and UFOs. Along with this is what Robtop called an epic color. Shadow Black. This was the first and only epic color. Going online you'll be able to immediately see some changes to the interface. Featuring the brand new weekly leaderboard commonly dominated by hackers. Hmm, but what does this button do? Well this button leads to map packs. These levels are handpicked by Robtop to be put in packs of three where if you beat them you'll get certain new achievements and these new secret coins. Not only hidden in Robtop levels, but also in the rewards for map packs. When I said level easy would become the most downloaded Geometry Dash level, this was the main reason why. If your level got put in a map pack, you can expect far more downloads than most other normal Geometry Dash levels in circulation. Creators like Neptune and eventually Zelink would have entire map packs filled with just their levels, giving them a huge boost in popularity. It was around this time where the Geometry Dash World Cafe would start brewing with new ideas. Over this update, three level series made up of levels by different people would emerge. The first was an idea by Partition where he would ask players to make a level based on the country that he assigned them. The first part of the title would consist of GW, while the second part of the title would consist of a country name. While many members wouldn't participate, certain members would still release levels. Most notably, GW Russia by Majako, GW Luxembourg by Elec Metal, and GW Vatican by Lightbulb. The second project was the Element series, where members would be assigned certain parts of the periodic table to base levels off of. Creators like Mega Deer, Experienced Dawn, and PM Creator Arco would create their own levels loosely based off the Element concept. The most interesting Element level would be an obscure level created by Dark X that was called Element 111RG. This level was discussed across the GW forum, and many would start calling it the hardest rated level in the game. However, after one GW member was able to find a well-hidden secret way of the level, the level was unrated and deleted. Today the full level doesn't exist, and we can only piece the remains of the level through screenshots taken by GW members. Just like Partition's GW collab, many slots of the periodic table remain incomplete to this day. The third series I should mention is the Alphabet series, where certain creators would be assigned a letter of the English alphabet and make a level based off what they were assigned. This would, like any other GW project, be unfinished, and only four letters were ever rated. Alphabet G by Mr. Flueco, Alphabet M by Funny Game, Alphabet W by Ducks, and the most interesting of the four, Alphabet X by Black P2S Full. This was a very difficult demon inspired by Electroman Adventures which used invisible blocks to create confusing memory parts. It is at this point that I should mention the notoriety that Black P2S Full had already started gaining ever since the 1.6 update came out. Creators were rushing to the editor to make their new club step inspired demon. Don would be the first while others soon followed. Neptune would make two new version 2 levels off of the update and these would quickly be rated demon. However, no demon would soon be able to compare with what Black P2S Full would release on April 1st of 2014. This is Silent Club. Immediately you can see red flags popping up as to how this level could have gotten verified. This orb spam, these extremely tight UFO sections, ball sections, and especially ship sections would eventually start breeding controversy in the GW forum as many members had started questioning the legitimacy of Black P2S Full. During this time a player had been rising rapidly in star count. This player's username was Cyclic and he would start rising up to Seri. Every time his star count would become higher than Seri's, Seri would catch up rapidly and for the most part Cyclic would stay in second place. At this point, Seri had claimed to have substantial progress in Silent Club, so Cyclic would start taking interest in this level. It was at this point where one of the first exploits to verified levels was discovered. Cyclic would post a video of him finding the secret way to Silent Club using what we know today as the practice mode exploit. 
This exploit involves in flipping your gravity in practice mode and then reverting back to normal mode which flips your gravity at 0%, which in Silent Club's case would assumably send you into a ship portal into the sky where you could reap the rewards of illegitimately beating the level. After Robtop found this out, he would unrate Silent Club and Stereo Demon S would go back to being the hardest level. However, Alphabet X would not only stay unbeaten, but it would stay rated since nobody could find a secret way. After Silent Club was unrated, the community would go back to normal. Apart from a few holdouts that would actually be inspired by this and make their own levels with the Silent prefix. These levels would never be rated though, as the prefix of Silent would become synonymous with impossible hacked levels. Would any demon be able to dethrone Stereo Demon S? Well, to start talking about this, we'll have to first start talking about a problem spreading in the Geometry Dash community. At this point, there was a cheat engine players used to access other players' accounts, and this was done by swapping user IDs. This was quickly patched, so while most players wouldn't have their account mined, Sono924 would. At this point, a hell level hadn't released since early 1.5, and we finally got the reason why. The player who mined Sono's account saw a level called the Hell Inferno Re. Upon clicking it, they would be greeted with a small amount of extremely difficult gameplay and then a message saying Hell Come, with an angry face at the end. People assumed that this face was here to show Hugh's frustration that at a point he might have been nearly or completely finished with the Hell Inferno and now due to a data bug the level had been deleted. However, this wouldn't be the most unfortunate thing to happen to Sone because over time, tension in the GW forums had been overflowing with the discussion of his legitimacy. Finally, it would all be released when members of the GW forum would try to expose Sono924. Players started being suspicious of Sone's verifications when he shared a screenshot of his level editor and the screenshot appeared to be in the 1.2 update, a full 4 updates behind. At first, people didn't understand why he was still using this editor. However, some were able to logically deduce that Sone was still trying to exploit glitches that had been patched since. This theory was furthered when people realized that you could upload levels onto the Geometry Dash servers with an outdated client. However, the screenshot that did Sone in was this screenshot. This screenshot showed a time inconsistency. While Sone would be able to ward this accusation off, the final piece of evidence in this screenshot would come in the form of a black background. However, players who had seen the end of the Hell Zone saw that it ended with a light blue background. All this evidence was compiled by a player known as Reflection, which would then post this onto the GW forum. Shortly after this, everything was brought to Robtop's attention and every single Hell level would be unrated. After this, there would be no word from Sone until he would use someone else to forward his apology to GW. This player was known as Lunar Sim, who was a creator and star grinder. He admitted to everything and would announce that he would quit Geometry Dash to make sure that he would never be responsible of something like this again. After the exposal of Sono924, all of his Hell levels would be unrated. After this, the community would remain mostly the same. Mostly everyone would cease talking about Sone, apart from the occasional mention in the forums of GW. However, the Hell series set the precedent for Robtop having newfound suspicion for extremely difficult levels, and no new rated levels of the highest caliber of difficulty were rated in the remainder of the 1.6 update. Apart from one level that slipped through the cracks. Do you remember Roadboast? creator of the obviously hacked Heaven and Hell. Well, starting in 1.4, he would start the Ice Carbon series. The first level of this series was the obscure rated demon level Ice Carbon Zust, with no one really caring for the level because it was too hard for normal players and too easy for the best. The second level of the series, Ice Carbon Chaos, was made in 1.5 and has since been deleted and perhaps no one has the full copy of the level except possibly Roadbos himself. From what the community has been able to piece together, the level must have been difficult for the short time it was around. It would never pick up a rate though. However, the third level, Ice Carbon Diablo X, would be quite the different story. Roadboast released this level in 1.6 and it managed to pick up a feature. Ice Carbon Diablo X had no secret ways and there was no evidence of Roadboast being a hacker. Therefore, Robtop welcomed the level to the star rated list with open arms. During the entire second half of 1.6, this would be the only extremely difficult level to be released, and going into the 1.7 update, it would remain obscure, as it was still the runner-up to the most difficult level, Stereo Demon S. So that was episode 2. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. There were some events that caused the episode's production to take longer and not reach its full potential, however, its full potential will be released once the full documentary comes out where all my plans of this episode may finally come into fruition. However, as it is now, I am satisfied with the final product of this episode, and since most of my work has been lifted off my shoulders, I will have a lot more time to produce content, so stay tuned and check the links in the description. Goodbye!